Here's the example from the last tutorial where we calculate the total sales for each client. So we select the client ID column and the sum of invoice total from the invoices table and group our data by client ID. And here's the result, beautiful. Now, what if we wanna include only the clients that have a total sales of more than, let's say $500. So we don't wanna include client number two. How can we do this? Well, we cannot use our where clause in this situation. So we cannot write where total sales is greater than 500 because at this point we have not grouped our data. We group our data after. So on line five, we don't know the total sales for each client. That is why we cannot use our where clause to solve this problem. If you execute this query, MySQL is gonna yell at you saying unknown column total sales. So how can we solve this problem? That is where we use the having clause. We use the having clause to filter data after we group our rows. So here we can write a filter like total sales is greater than 500. Let's execute the query. Now client number two is excluded from the result. Beautiful. So with the where clause, we can filter data before our rows are grouped. And with the having clause, we can filter data after our rows are grouped. That is the difference. Now let me remove this where clause and make this example more interesting. For each client, we wanna calculate the total sales as well as the number of invoices. So we can do a count of invoice total, or we could do a count of everything and label it as number of invoices. Let's execute this query one more time. There you go. So now for each client, we see the total sales as well as the number of invoices. Now let's say we wanna filter this result and only return the records that have a total sales of $500 or more and more than five invoices. So we wanna exclude the first two records because they don't have more than five invoices. So here in the having clause, we can write a compound search condition. So we wanna get the records where total sales is more than 500 and number of invoices is greater than five. Let's execute the query. And here's the end result. So to recap, we use the where clause to filter data before grouping our rows. And we use the having clause to filter data after we group our rows. And here, just like our where clause, we can type out one or more conditions. But the columns that we use here have to be part of our select clause. In other words, here, we cannot reference the payment date column because it is not included in our select clause, okay? In contrast, when writing a where clause, we can reference any columns whether we're selecting them or not. These are the two differences between where and having clauses. All right, here's a more challenging exercise for you. For this exercise, we're gonna use our SQL store database. So write a query to get the customers who are located in Virginia and have spent more than $100. It's a fantastic exercise and helps you get job ready. So spend three to five minutes on this exercise and then come back, continue watching. All right, once again, when solving a complex problem, we should always break that problem into smaller and easier to solve problems. So first, let's only get the customers who are located in Virginia. We write a query like this. Select everything from customers where state equals Virginia. And by the way, we should use the SQL store database. So on the top, we have use SQL underline store followed by a semicolon. Let's execute the query. There you go. So here are the two customers located in Virginia. Now, if you look at the columns return here, nowhere in this result set, we have sales information. We don't know how much each of these people have paid us. Where can we find that information? Well, in the order items table, we know how much we have sold in each order. So for each order, for each product, we know the quantity and the unit price. However, we don't have the customer information here. So we don't know who has bought these products. Those pieces of information are in the orders table. So in the orders table, we know who has placed 
what order. So what we need to do now is to join the customers table with the orders table so we can find the orders for each customer. And then we'll have to join the orders table with order items so we can calculate the total sales by each customer. So back to our query, we have selected everything from the customers table. Let's give it an alias and then join it with the orders table using the customer ID column. And then once again, let's join it with the order items table. We call it OI using the order ID table. Now let's execute this query and see what we get. First, we see our joint columns, which are order ID and customer ID. Then we have information about each customer, followed by information about each order. So we have order date, status, comments, ship date, and so on. And then we have information about each order item. So we have the product ID, quantity, and unit price. So now from this table, we can calculate the total amount each customer has spent. Back to our query, instead of selecting everything, let's select customer ID, as well as first name and last name. Now to calculate the total amount each customer has spent, we need to use the sum aggregate function. And here we should write an expression. We go in the order items table and get the quantity column. Then we multiply it by order item dot unit price. So for each order item, we calculate the total cost, and then we pass all these values to the sum function. So this will return the total amount each customer has spent. Let's call that total sales. So here we have used an aggregate function. Now we need to group our data. So after the where clause, we type out group by. Here we should group our data by three columns, customer ID, first name, and last name. With this, we can see the total sales for each group, which is the combination of customer ID, first name, and last name. As a rule of thumb, whenever you have an aggregate function in a select statement, and you're grouping your data, you should group by all the columns in the select clause. So I'm gonna copy these three lines and then paste them here. Now we should remove the trailing comma. All right, let's execute the query and see what we get. So we see the total sales for each customer, right? We're almost done. The last part is to apply a filter here and only return the customers who have spent a minimum of $100. So we wanna exclude the first customer here and return only the second customer. Back to our query. Earlier I told you that we used the where clause to filter data before grouping it, and we used the having clause to filter data after grouping our rows. So. After group by, we add having total sales greater than 100. Let's execute the query one more time. Now we only see one record. That is customer with ID2 who has spent a total of $157. So here's the end result. I hope you completed this exercise because a lot of problems you work on in the real world are very similar to what you saw in this video. Now, if you couldn't complete this exercise, don't worry, we're gonna have more exercises like this later in the course.